Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Energy Minister Jeff Khadebe has sought to remove the uncertainty that has surrounded South Africa's independent power producer programs with an announcement on the signing of long-delayed projects. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What exactly has the new minister announced and what does it mean? Yes, 10 days into the job, uh, Minister Khadebe has you know, ended this uncertainty that's been lingering since, the, well, end of 2015, but really since the middle of 2016, when Eskom refused to sign further renewable energy power purchase agreements. This affected mainly 27 large-scale projects, one concentrated solar project, and the rest, 26 uh, divided between solar PV and wind projects. And these were bid under the Renewable Energy Procurement System, which is internationally acclaimed, which has helped uh, reduce the cost of uh, renewable energy in South Africa quite dramatically from when it was first instituted around 20, uh, 2011, with the projects coming into the system since 2012. And uh, that really has put a, a, a halt on developments over the last two years. Um, and what, he's, what the minister has announced is that the 27 projects will be signed on the um, uh, March 13, so Tuesday, and that, that ends the uncertainty around those projects, which were legally procured in 2015, where the RPPs were considering legal action because they felt they had every right to go ahead. And it seems that Eskom has also been directed now and instructed to sign, both by the former uh, Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown before, her uh, before she was reshuffled and before her resignation, as well as now confirmation by Minister Khadeba that they will be signing the power purchase agreement aspect. And these projects should close before July. And once those, uh, those have closed, then we'll see shovels in the ground across the country, many of them in the Northern Cape, uh, and uh, these projects will create, they say, up to 61,000 jobs during the construction phase mostly. And then obviously during the 20-year life there will be some jobs around that. But more importantly, it ends the uncertainty that's been lingering. And it wasn't just confined <coughs> to the 27 projects, there's also been the around 20 small renewable projects. These are between 1 and 5 megawatts. And those have also been totally stalled over the last few years. There's going to be movement to signing those projects, getting the, the impediments out of the way for those. The two coal-fired RPP projects, which were also bid many years ago, and the preferred bidders have been announced for many years as well, and have been sitting in limbo. There's going to be movement around that. And then there was also the exciting announcement around trying to push forward with the gas projects. These have been sitting in limbo as well. We're expecting for some years uh, so requests for proposals around that. There's still going to be quite, quite a bit of work to do on the gas before it comes, it comes to market, before there's a request for proposal. Um, suggestions that the request for proposal would probably only come out in the first quarter of 2019. But before that, uh, the minister's going to engage with his counterparts in the region. Mozambique, we know, has a lot of gas. Um, Namibia sits with the Kudu gas fields to see whether some of that gas can be integrated into South Africa's energy and electricity systems as well as what the, the prospects are for, for the indigenous uh, gas, shale gas, as well as conventional offshore gas. So it's a lot of movement in a very short space of time. It lifts the uncertainty. It makes South Africa a serious investment destination, again, for independent power producers. It's a very positive development, and one that I think uh, will also help bring some certainty around the private sector's role in uh, the, the power space. You know, we've had Eskom putting up resistance, Eskom suggesting they want to go back to the future in terms of a, being the dominant provider, but Eskom also with serious financial problems and not really being in, in a place to do the procurement of all these power generation. And I think this triggers, uh, well, this signals that the private sector is going to play a bigger role in the power system in future and also probably signals that government's going to be open to a new type of business model, not only for Eskom, but for the entire electricity system in South Africa. This deals with some, but not all, of the uncertainties facing the sector. That's for sure. I mean, as, as I said, it's 10 days into the job, or yesterday was 10 days into the job for the minister, but there's a lot on the, on the plate, a lot of things that have left, been left to lag, mostly because I think we were very distracted by the nuclear procurement program and the issues around that and the, the previous succession of ministers have had to 
you know, being forced to apply their mind to nuclear when there's all these other moving parts that are just not coming together. And that's seen a distortion on a number of things. The integrated energy plan is distorted. The integrated resources plan is not only distorted, but it's sadly out of date or sorely out of date. And basically, the minister is going to have to start taking action around these other uncertain areas. And uh, he gave the indication that uh, in the next week or two, he would be making an announcement around the integrated resource plan, possibly the integrated energy plan as well. These, are, this would be major, these would be major developments, and there'll be a lot of focus as to how he approaches that. Is he going to take this, this gazetted uh, notice that hasn't been gazetted, but apparently proved in the cabinet in December under his pre predecessor, where the RP is just reshaped in terms of the 2010 RP outcomes for the lower demand? Or are we going to start afresh with a whole new uh, integrated resource plan process that is based on the new generation costs? And if he does that, I think then nuclear's future within that plan is very much in doubt. Khadeba's announcement also coincided with calls by municipalities for a fundamental reappraisal of how the energy system functions. Yes, we're entering a, a new phase in electricity uh, around the world, not just in South Africa. The renewables penetration rates are rising everywhere and co uh, countries are having to deal with that, the change that that brings to from a, generally from a centralised system of big power stations using big transmission lines to supply uh, distributors <coughs> that supply customers, either households or, or, um, or companies to a system that's far more distributed in future. Now this has both risks and opportunities. For the municipalities and for Eskom, there's what people call the utility death spiral because <coughs> the, the costs keep going up, the tariffs keep going up and demand keeps falling as people that can, and it's usually the rich and companies that are able to defect. And that's very bad for the system, ultimately very bad for the grid. And therefore we have to uh, come to a new approach or a new model of how we embrace the change without you know, um, you know, causing major devastation or catastrophe for the grid, which is, an important, is going to be important going forward. The, the, the move towards grid defection is not necessarily the best and the most efficient uh, way forward for the electricity system and will raise the cost and will also exclude people in the long run, especially the poor. So we have to find some sort of happy medium or a new model, and that's what really Salga at their energy conference was saying, we need clarity on how we're going to embrace this transition. And in embracing the transition, the business models that are, are fit for purpose for that transition, because if we don't make those decisions, Eskom and the municipal utilities are at uh, deep risk of failure. And we're already seeing some of that failure happening. Uh, you know, before our eyes at, at Eskom, we're seeing the, the financial stress there, but at, uh, maybe not as transparent what is happening for the uh, the municipal distributors and those city utilities. So we, the, this coincides, this new dawn uh, at the electricity department and the new minister, I think coincides with a need for a rethink. And it's going to be interesting to see in terms of the priorities that Jeff Kadebi has outlined for his first 100 days, how he integrates this call for new rules, new certainty for the embracing of the transition into that 100-day uh, that action plan. And hopefully over the next few period, we're going to have greater certainty as to how South Africa is going to move ahead in this uh, environment. It's a big change, I think, over the last few months from the energy summit that the, the former minister had towards the end of last year, towards the sort of the, the, the way people are viewing energy at the moment. We, I think it's a much more realistic, a much more hands-on, uh, a much, uh, you know, a much less encumbered uh, by nuclear type debate that we are now suddenly having in South Africa, and uh, it's the, so the windows have been thrown open, and the opportunities are there, and now we just have to seize them both from a policy perspective, and then once we have that, possibly there'll be legislative and changes, and then we'll see that filtering through hopefully to having sustainable business models for the for the, the national utility Eskom and for these municipal utilities who are raising their alarm bells that things are not going well, that this is not sustainable. So we need to get onto, back onto a sustainable path. We've been off it for some time, and hopefully Minister Khadebi is the man for the job. Thank you.
That's the second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.